In this video, let's learn about slot props. Now this again is a concept that is best understood with an example. So let's dive into the code straight away. I'm going to create a new file in the components folder. Let's call it name list.view. Within the file, use the vbase CSS snippet to create a component. Name the component as name list. As the name indicates, the component is responsible for displaying a list of names in the UI. So let's implement this component. In the data object, I'm going to copy paste a property called names. It is an array of objects. Each object has a first name and a last name. We have Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent and Princess Diana. Our next step is to bind these names to the template. Since we have a list of names, we need to use the v4 directive. So in the template, I'm going to add an h3 tag just so that the font size is big enough for you guys to see. On the h3 tag, add the v4 directive and the right hand side is going to be name in names. Let's also bind a unique value to the key attribute. We know that name.firstName is unique within the array. Now as the a3 content, we can render name.firstName followed by name.lastName. The name list component is done. Let's include it in app.view. Import it in the script block and add it to the components list. Finally, invoke it in the template. Let's also remove the code from the previous videos. Card component, the import statement, and the components entry. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should see the list of names being displayed. What we have here is great, however, Let's say we need to display the list of names in other parts of our application. In some pages, we might have to display just the first name and in other pages, we might have to display last name followed by the first name. Basically, we want the parent component to control how the child component will render the content. I'm pretty sure you would have guessed by now but this seems like a perfect use case to use slots. Let's go back to VS Code and make the changes. In namelist.view, instead of rendering first name followed by last name, let's add a slot in between the opening and closing h3 tag. Back in the app component, let's specify the content for this slot. So instead of a self-closing tag, we need the opening and closing tags for the name list component. In between the tags, we can specify the format the name should be rendered in. However, you might have realized that we have come across a problem. The name object in each iteration is present in the name list component. It is not present in the app component. So how do we access name.firstName and name.lastName in the app component. Well, we need a way to send name as data to the parent component. And in view, we use what is known as slot props to achieve that. It is pretty similar to props, but we are applying them on a slot within a component. The syntax is pretty simple though. In the name list component, on the slot, we are going to add two props to send the first name and the last name to the parent component. For first name, add a prop called first name and use the vbind directive shorthand. To this slot prop, we assign name.firstName. Here name is the current object in each iteration. 
Similarly, let's add another slot prop called last name and assign name dot last name. Now that we are sending data to the parent, let's head over to the app component and use these slot props. Now slot props can be obtained on a template tag. So within the name list component, add a template tag. We need to indicate to view that this template belongs to the slot in our name list component for which we need the slot name. In our example, it is the default slot. So on the template, add the vslot directive and the name of the slot is default. But what is special here is the right hand side of this directive will give us access to the slot props sent from the child component. Let's call this slot props which represents an object that contains all the props sent from the child. Which means within the template tag we can now bind slot props dot first name and slot props dot last name. I can also make a copy of this name list component and render slot props dot last name followed by slot props dot first name and make one final copy but this time display just the first name. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we don't quite see the last name. So let's change this to just last name. Go back to the browser and we can see the list of names as expected. First name followed by the last name, last name followed by the first name and only the first name. In each of the three cases, the logic to render a list of names is the same. But the way we display the list of names is now controlled by the parent component through slots which as you can see gives us more flexibility in the way we display the data. To summarize about slot props, in the child component use the vbind directive to pass some data to the parent component. In the parent component use the vslot directive followed by the name of the slot. This gives you access to slot props for that particular slot which you can then use to structure the template as you want to. With that, we come to the end of the discussion about slots in Vue. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.